you're walking the streets of a big city, going to clothes stores and trying on garments. And they have a label promising that they're more ethical or sustainable. How do you know that's a promise you can trust? I want to know exactly what impact they really make. Can customers trust the promise of these labels? And if so, can this approach scale to change the whole cotton industry? This is the village of Katkoi in the state of Gujarat in India. And this is Alison Ward, the CEO of Cotton Connect. What we want to do is understand how we can take regenerative agricultural practices and apply it to smallholder farmers. What does regenerative agriculture mean? A starting point is to understand what it is the alternative to. Conventional practices normally mean excessive use of pesticide, excessive use of fertiliser and probably excessive use of water. And we help farmers learn really good agricultural techniques. So that might be using the right pesticides. It's also about using bio-pesticides, so making their own pesticides on the farm. My name is Nita Ben Vijay Bhai. I am with my Sanyukta Parivar. I am with my Sanyukta Parivar. I am with my Sanyukta Parivar. I am with my Sanyukta हमारा खेतर में हमें जो बायोपेस्टिसाइड नाखे है एना कपास पर लीलो रहे थे अमरी जो जमीन है यहाँ वर्मी कम्पोस्ट खातर थी फलदुप्त है हम जय आप एम अपने हाथ नाखी तो तरत एम मटी आ जाए जे रासायणिक कपा अमें करेलो एम अपने हाथ नाखी तो हाथ पर अंदर घुसत नहीं एटली तो जमीन कठण है वी ओल्सो टीच दम अबाउट यूजिंग pheromone trap, it's a trap that attracts the male moth and that actually reduces things like pink ballworm which is one of the big pests in cotton. Alison went on to tell me how 10 years ago the issues were about pesticide and fertilizer use but increasingly now one of the big problems is simply the impact of climate change. वधारे ताप लीधे अमरा आरोग्य पर असर थाय छे अने अमे वधारे समय खेतर मा काम पण करी सकता नथी मारु नाम तडवी कौमुदबेन सतीश भाई छे अ गया वर्ष जे कमोसमी वर्षात पडो तो तो ए वधारे प्रमाण मा पडो तो तो घणा खेतरो मा पाणी भराई गेलो अनप्रेसिडेंटेड रेन वाइड स्प्रेड डिस्ट्रक्शन वाज अनलीश्ड ऑन क्रॉप्स प्रॉपर्टीज एंड एनिमल्स एज़ वेल तो एना लिथे कपास पण मडन मरी गेलो पर मैडम जी हमने तो वो काम तो करना ही है ज़्यादा धूप हो या ना हो पर हम हमको जो खेत में काम करना है वो तो करना ही पड़ेगा पर हम हम जब जो चार बजे जब छाइडा वो छुट्टा ही जाए छाइडू त्यारे जाइए चेतले अब मैं तो हजी मौरा सुधी खेतर में काम अच्छा करिए चें। So I asked Alison how regenerative agriculture would help these farmers cope with unpredictable climate conditions. There's no magic wand, but we can talk to farmers and educate them first about the impact of climate change and also solutions, understanding how to use composting better to retain moisture if it gets really hot, if there is excessive flooding, how to replant the cotton if, if that's appropriate. Which brings us to the key question, what's the overall impact for farmers in taking part in this programme? We see an amazing benefits to farmers and we see the farm profits overall increase by up to 47% on average. And that's because there's a reduction in inputs by 15% and then also yield is increasing by around 18%. So combined we're really seeing the farm being much, much more profitable. बाकी अमे तो दर वर्ष हमने बीस हजार नो खर्च होता है ये तो तो आ वर्ष हमें खाली पांच और हजार नो खर्च कर रही हो से हमारी खेती में इतने हमने खेती न खेती में खर्च पान ओछो था ये उसे। We've also created a group of women called the Climate Change Ambassadors. I know you said you were grateful to us, but the gratitude is to you. They are really the pioneers in their village, and the goal is that we educate them, and they then educate other women. My name is Tarvi Minakshi Ben Kanchan Bhai. I'm a leader. 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 So from here, the cotton gets bagged up and it goes into ginning. 
rep and the farmer may sell directly to the gin or the agent may come and buy from from the village itself. We teach farmers on the quality of their cotton so the longer the length of the cotton thread the more money they'll get. There's no doubt that the farmers I spoke to had seen real benefit from being part of this programme. But what happens to their cotton after this point? How do we know you can trust that your garment is made from this cotton rather than someone else's? My name is Niranjan Patel. I am the managing director of Vaibhavalakshmi. Vaibhavalakshmi was started uh, in 1970s and I am the third generation in cotton. This is a unit which is both a ginner and a spinner. I was curious to know about the process here and particularly what makes it trustworthy when it comes to being able to trace the cotton from farmer to garment. The lorry is weighed in before it enters the facility and the details are recorded of the weight etc. In the designated area the lorry offloads the seed cotton which is the raw cotton. It is kept in a designated area for our program. So at the gin, it's a very simple mechanised process that separates on one side this fluffy cotton wool and on the other side you get the seed. The bale weight typically in India is in the bar range of about 165 kgs. The bales are then stored in a designated area again for our programme. There the unique bale IDs and stickers are printed from our platform software and then those are pasted onto the individual bales. Tracebale is Cotton Connect's traceability platform which helps supply chain to track the difficult to track last mile supply chains. It captures the procurement at the farm level, the ginner, the spinner, the knitter, the weaver and the garment manufacturer. We collaborated recently with Alexa. Physical DNA markers are sprayed at the gin conveyor belts where this DNA gets added to the, the raw material or the lint. If you test the garment, you can see traces of the DNA in that. So we'd heard about the impact on the farmers. What about the gins and spinners? In the gins, we are really looking at the carbon footprint of the gins. It tends to be a labour force that's seasonal, so we want to ensure that human rights are respected within the gin. Almost 77% of the power is being generated by our own solar and wind wheel. The bales then, based on the orders, move to the next processor, the spinners. What I'd seen throughout was the lengths gone to to keep the cotton separate and to run the process well. I asked Darwa, is this as good as it gets or is there further to go? They definitely have met the expected standard of the facility. But those are the norms as of today, this year that we are in. These norms are changing, evolving. So that is why it makes it a journey. I thought I'd had pretty good answers to my first two questions, but I still want to know about scale and the future. I asked the Cotton Connect team if we could come together for one last discussion specifically so I could ask, what's next? What, what can you do with this? Because the risk for Con Connect, as I see it, is that fantastic islands of excellence, yeah. and all around you, it's not quite so good. The government is in the process of drafting a blueprint uh, or new policies around uh, sustainable and environmental friendly green agricultural practices. That clearly goes to show uh, the, the the level of interest and uh, the seriousness the government also holds. I would definitely like to tap and build on to that one. When I started this journey 10 years ago, everyone said it was too difficult to have a traceable cotton supply. Since Cotton Connect started, we've worked with 770,000 farmers. And if you look at that in terms of a farming family, that reaches almost 4 million people and that allows brands and retailers to understand their programme but also make a claim against it. So in the course of one week in India, I'd seen the difference that Cotton Connect's programme has made on the ground with smallholder farmers. And I'd seen how this plays out through the ginning and spinning stages. And I've been convinced that this can scale 
Cotton Connect already covers 5% of cotton production in Gujarat alone, which shows the potential. The challenge remaining is the part I find most compelling. Can they prove that those regenerative approaches can scale as well? Inevitably, it's a work in progress, but brands, customers and producers alike need to ask, if we're not on this journey towards regenerative, then what is the plan? And regenerative agriculture and cotton really looks like it can have an impact at scale across the world.